Some systems can look different but act very similarly, while other systems can look similar but act very differently. When I heat water in a pan, the temperature at the bottom of the pan increases. When the temperature causes the water to exceed its vapor pressure, the water turns into gas and we say that the water is boiling. Fluid vaporization can also be caused by lowering the pressure. If the pressure in water gets low enough, the water can vaporize at relatively low temperatures. This phenomenon is called cavitation. Before talking about cavitation specifically, let's review the conditions under which fluids change to gas. This transition is governed by the vapor pressure in the fluid. If the fluid pressure is less than the vapor pressure, at that temperature, the fluid turns into a gas. This means that there are a couple of different ways that we can turn a fluid into vapor. First, we can keep the pressure constant and increase the temperature. Once the temperature is high enough so that the vapor pressure exceeds the pressure of the fluid, the fluid turns to gas. This is what happens when we boil water on the stove. Another option is to reduce the pressure in the fluid without changing the fluid's temperature. Room temperature water will boil if we put the water in a vacuum. It so happens that certain fluid flow phenomenon cause the pressure in the fluid to drop. If these phenomena cause the pressure to drop below the vapor pressure, we can have what is sometimes called flow-induced boiling, or more commonly, cavitation. Cavitation and the bubbles caused by boiling water on a stove appear to be similar, but they can have very different effects. The main difference is that the bubbles caused by adding heat to the water tend to collapse slowly. Cavitation bubbles, on the other hand, collapse quickly. When bubbles created by cavitation collapse, they can create very high pressure surges. The reason for this is that cavitation bubbles tend to form and collapse quickly. Cavitation bubbles form when the fluid enters a low pressure zone. Unlike bubbles created by heat input, the only reason the cavitation bubbles exist is the low pressure surrounding them. So if the bubble moves into a higher pressure region, there's nothing inside the bubble to resist its collapse. The vapor converts back to fluid almost immediately. As this bubble collapses, the fluid around the bubble is rushing in to fill this void. This means that the fluid replacing the bubble has a high velocity and a lot of kinetic energy. Once the bubble collapses completely, the fluid rushing in to fill the void has to stop suddenly. So the kinetic energy in the fluid is converted to potential energy in the form of very high pressures. If the cavitation bubbles are near or on a surface, these pressures can cause erosion and pitting of the surface. Now let's look at some flow phenomena that cause fluid pressures to drop and can lead to cavitation. Fluid pressure reflects the fluid's potential energy while fluid flow velocity indicates kinetic energy. Because of energy conservation, increasing the kinetic energy results in a corresponding decrease in potential energy. This means that if we cause the fluid to move faster, the pressure drops. One common way to speed fluid up is to decrease the flow area. Suppose we have a duct with an orifice in it. The orifice has a smaller flow area than the duct. Since any fluid that enters the duct also has to go through the orifice, the fluid velocity at the orifice, V2, has to be higher than the velocity V1 in the duct. A higher velocity means that there's more kinetic energy in the fluid at the orifice. This increase in kinetic energy has to be balanced by a reduction in potential energy or pressure. This is exactly what happens when you put your thumb over the opening of a hose. The water speed increases, which causes the pressure to decrease. Cavitation at pump inlets can be a major problem. If the cavitation bubbles form on the impeller blades, the pressure spikes created when the bubbles collapse can pit and erode the blades themselves. This is a picture of an impeller that's been pretty thoroughly chewed up by cavitation. Even if the cavitation doesn't damage the pump, it invariably causes reduced performance, and it can create vibration issues. Cavitation sounds like the pump is pumping gravel. Pump specifications usually include something called an NPSP for net positive suction pressure. This is the minimum pressure at the pump inlet that you need to maintain to keep the pump from cavitating. So when you're designing a system containing a pump, you need to make sure that you select a pump with an appropriate NPSP for your system. Who knew that bubbles could be so dangerous?